Good morning, AP government. This morning, we are going to take a look at the required Supreme Court cases that you had to cover as part of our look at the uh, judicial branch. Um, we're going to go over just a couple that we've already discussed, uh, but most of these are the ones that were new to you through this unit. Uh, so the first one we're going to take a look at is McCullough versus Maryland. Uh, we've already done this one, and uh, so it should be pretty much of a review. Remember, there were two issues in this case. The first one dealt with whether or not the federal government had the right to make banks, uh, and that's why the bank uh, logo is right there. Uh, the other issue was whether or not Maryland, a state, could tax the federal government. Um, because they were having national banks in Maryland, and Maryland said, if you're not a state bank, then we're going to tax you. And so two issues, and so thus there were two outcomes. Uh, the outcome was that uh, states could not tax the federal government because of the Supremacy Clause. The Supremacy Clause says that the Constitution and federal laws are higher than any state law and so John Marshall stating that the power to tax is the power to destroy basically said that the states could not destroy the federal government because of the supremacy clause the other one was the suit uh, was that because of the necessary and proper clause uh, the federal government had the right to create banks because it was quote necessary and proper um, and so we've already gone over that one hopefully you remember that uh, and here are your issues and your outcomes. So if you need to pause to take a look, go right ahead. Um, our first new case is Brown versus Board of Education. Um, before we get into Brown versus Board, what you need to know uh, was that there was another case about 50 years earlier called Plessy versus Ferguson. And Plessy uh, allowed for states to segregate their races as long as the uh, accommodations were equal so that's where we came up with the phrase separate but equal as long as the facilities were equal then you could separate the um, the facilities so in this case Linda Brown and uh, a series of other students from across the United States uh, were relegated to go to African-American schools uh, even though there was a white school literally right down the street. Um, and so she uh, decided to fight the separate but equal stance uh, set up in Plessy versus Ferguson. Um, and at this time, segregation in education had been going on uh, pretty much as long as, and possibly even before, Plessy versus Ferguson. Um, the Supreme Court was led by a gentleman named Earl Warren. He is the gentleman in the middle. Uh, and this is one of the first cases uh, where we start to see the Supreme Court take a more liberal stance on things. Um, the outcome of the case was that uh, separate but equal was inherently unequal uh, and therefore needed to be struck down. And so is segregation in education allowable or does it violate the 14th Amendment? Uh, and they said that it does not. Uh, schools may not segregate because it is inherently unequal and thus a violation of the 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Laws. Now, as you know, it didn't change the United States right away, uh, but it did begin the, uh, the look at uh, segregation in our society. And some see this as the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. And so that is a review of Brown v. Board of Education probably one of the more famous cases that we're going to be dealing with. Next one from the 1970s is Roe v. Wade. Uh, this one deals with uh, abortion, but before that I need to talk about a previous case called Griswold versus Connecticut. In Griswold, the court ruled that there was a right of privacy that existed in the Constitution through the spirit of the First Amendment and your ability to select whatever religion you want through the uh, Third Amendment which says that you don't have to quarter soldiers in your house through the Fourth Amendment that states that the government may not illegally or unreasonably search or seize you 
and the Ninth Amendment, which says that the uh, rights that you have are more than just the ones listed in the Supreme Court. So now that they established that you had a right of privacy, we get into Roe v. Wade. Uh, basically, this one is about a lady who uses the pseudonym Jane Roe so that her identity could be protected. And she attempts to have an abortion or go for an abortion in Texas. However, Texas only allows for abortions if your life is in danger or in rape. And so she initially claimed rape, but then obviously changed her story when that wasn't true. And when they found out that she was not raped, uh, they would not give her an abortion. Henry Wade is the attorney general of Texas and the, the district attorney for Dallas. And so uh, he is the one who is trying to uphold the uh, decision or the law in Texas. This is Norman McCorvey, otherwise known as Jane Rowe. And this is Henry Wade, uh, who is the district attorney. Um, in Roe v. Wade, uh, the an issue is can a state ban the use of abortion or do women have the right to make the decisions for themselves due to the right of privacy and it uh, came out in a 7 to 2 decision that uh, states may not ban the use of abortions totally but as the pregnancy goes on they may limit it more and more so in the first three months or the first trimester women may have abortions on demand they can have it right away uh, through months four through six, they may be placed on limits like a 48-hour waiting period or uh, you have to watch certain videos before they're going to give it to you. And then seven through nine, the third trimester, you can only have it if your life is in danger or uh, uh, other uh, physical means. Women do have a right to abortion through these different stages uh, and the states may limit it. Um, this decision really uh, got under the skin of conservatives for a couple of reasons. Number one, because it's abortion, uh, and they tend, they tend to take an absolute view on it. But they also didn't like it because they thought, like, this is an example of uh, the judges making law, which is not their job. Um, they said that nowhere in the Constitution can you see this breakdown of pregnancies uh, via trimesters, and that this is just an example of judges making legislature so or making legislation uh, so this was pretty controversial when it came out and still is today and with our court we may see uh, this go this uh, court case change in the near future so that's our review of Roe v Wade uh, our next one is another one that came from the Earl Warren era Gideon versus Wainwright uh, this one is usually matched up with another one uh, that is not required called Miranda versus Arizona. This one comes first. Uh, in Gideon versus Wainwright, Earl Wayne Gideon was accused of breaking into a pool hall, stealing some money uh, and a small amount of alcohol. Uh, he was arrested, uh, and when he went to trial, he told the judge that he didn't have a lawyer because he couldn't afford one, and he would like to have one appointed to him. And the Florida court said, sorry, we only give lawyers... Uh, for cases that involve the capital punishment and yours doesn't involve the capital punishment so you'll have to defend yourself he had to defend himself he obviously lost and so he went to jail and in jail he wrote a uh, he wrote a request for the Supreme Court to take his case uh, and that gives us Gideon versus Wainwright um, and so this deals with the uh, Fifth Amendment's, or excuse me, the Sixth Amendment's right to have an attorney appointed to you, um, and whether or not that applies to all cases or just capital cases. And so the Supreme Court ended up saying that you do have a right to an attorney at all times for any type of criminal procedure, um, and thus uh, it became a fundamental right of uh, all criminals in the United States. So the issue is, do citizens enjoy a right of a lawyer for all trials? Um, and the answer was, yes, they do. Uh, that is a fundamental right based on the Sixth Amendment. For our last case, um, and this one also has another case that deals with sort of the same topics, Heller versus D.C., you have McDonald versus Chicago. Uh, in 
McDonald versus Chicago. Chicago had instituted a ban on handguns because they were having violent crimes uh, all over the place, and so they tried to get ahead of it by banning all handguns. Uh, a gentleman by the name of McDonald, uh, who was, I believe, an uh, off-duty police officer um, who uh, had a uh, legal right to carry a gun because he was a police officer, uh, applied to have uh, permission to carry a gun, and that permission was denied, and so he uh, sues the city of Chicago. Um, this is concerns, obviously, with the Second Amendment uh, and the Second Amendment's rights uh, that you have the right to bear arms. And in a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled that the Second Amendment does apply against states and local uh, areas, not only just the federal government. And so does Chicago's ban of handguns violate the Second Amendment? They said that it did. The 14th Amendment basically says that the Second Amendment applies to states and to local officials, and therefore you have a right to bear arms even at the state and local level. Um, and so this is a big one because it basically guaranteed rights to have handguns. And for some people, it saw that you cannot limit uh, the Second Amendment rights whatsoever. Uh, in our day and age with uh, assault weapons and whatnot, um, it will be uh, probably dealt with at some point in time whether or not we can ban those type of weapons. And uh, McDonald versus Chicago will probably be an, an issue that um, we'll have to deal with. This one also gives us uh, a, a vocabulary term that I'm going to need you to write down called selective incorporation. Selective incorporation basically means that the states have to follow the Bill of Rights. Uh, when the Bill of Rights was initially passed and followed, it was assumed that only the federal government had to follow these regulations. And over the course of our history, through the Supreme Court decisions, the Supreme Court has said that selectively, states have to follow uh, certain uh, amendments as well. But instead of just doing a blanket statement, the court has to go in bit by bit and apply it to states individually. And so this is the case that gives us the Second Amendment uh, applying to uh, states. Um, and so this is going to be where we stop because these are all the required cases. Uh, tomorrow you will be given a quiz over all of the cases that are required that we have gone over either previously or through this one. And I'll shoot out a list of what those cases are going to be uh, later on today. Um, so you need to know the four that uh, are new to you that I just went over and then the remainder of the cases we will go over next unit starting later this week um, when we talk about civil rights and civil liberties. Ta-ta for now. Have a great day. Bye-bye.